This is part 42 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss model validation with examples. When we submit this create employee form without filling name and email fields, notice we end up creating a new employee without name and email. If we go back to the list page, we have that same newly created employee without name. So what we want to do is when we submit this create employee form without filling name and email fields, we want to display validation error messages as you can see right here. Notice the values for name and office email fields are missing and hence the respect to required validation errors are displayed. If a value is provided and if it's not a valid value, for example, ABC123 is not a valid email format and hence we are displaying the validation error invalid email format. Let's see how to enforce these validation rules in ASP.NET Core. We want to make both name and email fields on this create employee form required fields. And we know for this create employee form, the model is employee class. And we can see that within the create.cshtml form right here. And the value from this input element name is bound to the name property of our employee class. So to make this field a required field, all we have to do is set the required attribute on this name property of our employee class. Notice we have a red squiggly. This is because the required validation attribute is present in system.componentModel.data annotations namespace. So let's bring this namespace in. We also want to make our email field a required field. So let's also decorate it with the required attribute. When this create employee form is submitted, the create action within our home controller is executed. And the values that we have on this form are mapped to the corresponding properties of the employee object that is passed as an input parameter to our create action method. For example, the value that we have in this name input field is mapped to the name property on this employee class. And remember, within our employee model class, we made this name property required by decorating it with the required attribute. So now, if we submit this form without a value in this name input field, then the corresponding property on the controller action method of this employee class name in this case will be null. When it is null with this required attribute, it fails required validation. And within our controller action method to check if validation has succeeded or failed, all we need to do is use model state dot is valid property. Is valid is a boolean property. It returns true if validation is successful, otherwise false. If validation is successful, we want to add the employee to our employee repository and then redirect the user to the details action so he can see the details of the newly added employee. If validation has failed, then we want to re-render this create view so the user can fix the validation errors and resubmit the form for processing. To re-render the same create view, all we need to do is include return view statement. Notice we have a red squiggly. That's because at the moment, the return type of our create action method is redirect to action result. And if you take a look at this view method, it actually returns view result. So view result cannot be implicitly converted to redirect to action result. And that is exactly the error message that we have. Cannot implicitly convert type view result to redirect to action result. To fix this, we have to change the return type of our create action method to I action result. Both redirect to action result and view result implement this interface I action result. So by setting the return type of our create action method to the parent interface type, this method now can either return redirect to action result, view result, or any other result type that implement this interface I action result. Now all that is left to do is display the validation error message. Here is our name input field. If this field has failed validation, we want to display the validation message right next to that field. For that, I'm going to include a span element and then use ASP-validation for tag helper. The value for this is going to be the name property of our employee class. So basically, by including this tag helper here, we are saying if there are any validation errors associated with the name property, then display those validation errors at this location where we have this pan element with this validation attribute, ASP validation for. Let's do the same with email input field as well. I'm going to make a copy of this and then change the name of the property here to email. 
Notice, now when we try to submit this create employee form without providing the values for name and email fields, we get the respect to required validation errors as expected. If you want the color of these validation error messages to be red, then use Bootstrap CSS class text danger. Let's do the same with our email input field as well. We have the red color now. At the moment, we only have required validation. We also want to validate if the provided data has the correct format. In this example, ABC123 is not a valid email format. So we want to display this validation error in valid email format. One easy way to achieve this is by using regular expression attribute. It validates if the provided value matches the pattern specified by the regular expression. We have already seen the required attribute to enforce required validation. In addition to these two validation attributes, there are several other built-in validation attributes like range, min length, max length, compare, etc. Range specifies the minimum and maximum value allowed. Min length specifies the minimum length of a string. Max length specifies the maximum length of a string. Compare compares two properties of a model. For example, compare email and confirm email properties. We can also create a custom validation attribute. Now let's look at some of these validation attributes in action. We want to validate if the provided email has got correct email format. For that, let's use the regular expression attribute. With regular expression attribute, we also have to specify a regular expression. The provided value is then checked if it matches the pattern specified by this regular expression. If we submit this form with an invalid email format, Notice we get the validation error. The field email must match the regular expression and it shows the regular expression that we have specified. If you don't like this error message, you can override this by using the error message property. Let's set the error message to invalid email format. While we are here, let's also change the display label for this email property. By default, the display label has the same name as the property email. We want to change this from email to office email. We do that by using the display attribute. To change the label text, simply use the name property and set it to the text that you want. Here, we want to set it to office email. When we resubmit this form, notice the label text is office email and we also see our custom error message. Let's include one more validation. We want the maximum length of this name property to be 50 characters. Let's enforce that using the max length attribute. So the maximum number of characters that we want to allow is 50. And we also want to customize the error message. So let's set the error message to name cannot exceed 50 characters. If we submit this form with more than 50 characters in the name input field, we get our max length validation error. At the moment, we are displaying validation error messages next to the input element that has failed validation. We can also display a summary of all these validation error messages at one place by using the validation summary tag helper. Let's display the summary of validation errors just above the create button. So let's include a div element right here and then use ASP validation summary tag helper. As you can see from the IntelliSense, the value can be all, model only, or none. We'll discuss the difference between these values in our upcoming videos. For now, let's set the value to all to indicate that we want to see all the validation errors. Notice when we resubmit this form, we see the summary of validation errors. To change the color to red, use text danger bootstrap CSS class. Three simple steps to implement validation in ASP.NET Core. Depending on the validation requirements of your application, apply the relevant attributes like required, range, etc. on the respective properties of the model class. Next, in the controller action method, check if the validation has succeeded or failed by checking model state dot is valid property. Finally, to display the validation errors, use the validation tag helpers ASP validation for and ASP validation summary. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.